Bienvenidos al canal chicos, bombazo informativo, Joe Rogan ha vuelto a la dieta carnívora. Vamos a reaccionar a un pequeño fragmento de su podcast en donde habla del tema. Vamos allá. You know, because like some people are just they have energy. Like what is energy? Like I always think of that. Like I switched to, uh, back to uh, the carnivore diet. You uh -huh. know, um, I go back and forth on that. Si no lo sabéis, Joe Rogan hizo la dieta carnívora hace unos años y básicamente se hizo viral por la importancia del podcast de Joe y básicamente porque le fue le fue genial, de acuerdo. And for the most part, I eat mo mostly meat and fruit. And some vegetables. That's like most of my diet. Occasionally I go crazy, like we were in the Bronx, we went to this Italian deli and these giant sandwiches was amazing. But that's a rare deviation on oh, my yeah. path. But o sea, el de normal consume básicamente carne con fruta y verdura. I had this moment, um, I guess it was about two weeks ago, mm -hmm. where I was like, you know what? Um, the best I ever felt, like literally the best I ever felt all throughout the day was when I was on the carnivore diet. Let me go back to that. Let me see what that's like. And one of the things that I saw, like, immediately, uh, for seven, eight days, I ate nothing but meat and eggs and fat and bacon and nothing else. I mean, nothing. I was real strict. And my brain was working so much better. It was weird. Like, I wasn't searching for, like, it was like I had more... El beneficio mental de la dieta. Mucha gente, mucha gente habla de esto. Access to my ability to form sentences, to... Mm -hmm. I was thinking clearer... It was like it was more effortless to have conversations, and I was like, "This is interesting. This is very interesting because this is not how I normally feel. This is like me at my optimum, but I'm able to sustain this multiple days in a row." And I think. ¿Ves? Este es el caso de alguien que no quiere perder peso y no tiene ninguna patología en particular que quiera resolver haciendo la dieta carnívora y solo por los beneficios mentales ya dicen, "Wow." that a lot of the foods that we eat, yeah. foods that have preservatives, a lot of bread and bullshit and just shitty food, your body uses so much resources to process that and it's not real food. It's kind of bad for you, right? And so your body is just like overburdened with this extra work. When you eat clean, like really, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, wild game and fat and beef tallow and all that and eggs, your body doesn't have any bullshit to process. So your body is... Eso es una manera de verlo. La manera que yo tengo de verlo es que, bueno, te acercas a la dieta que nos toca por especie, entonces todo es mejor. Less inflammation, you have less inflammation, mm -hmm. and you're operating off of ketones, essentially, for the most part, because your, your body is entering into a ketogenic state. You have just, just it's, you just feel like even through the whole day. I, didn't, I never felt like, a, like at the end of the day, like, oh boy, I'm tired. There was none of that. It was just so that's flat. mostly on the keto diet. Well, it's carnivore, carnivore diet. But but carnivore, you you must reach pa a, a periods of ketosis. There's a, a pro process called uh, la dieta carnívora bien formulada, que es con un cierto porcentaje de grasa. Eh, se hacen, o sea, entras en en ketosis, de acuerdo. El objetivo no estar siempre, no es estar siempre en ketosis, pero Estamos en lo que se llama la ketosis nutricional, que es un poquito de ketosis. Gluconeogenesis, I believe it is, see if that's correct. And I think that what that is, is when your body consumes only protein, your body will convert some of that protein into glucose. Mm. Gluconeogenesis es el método que tiene el cuerpo a través del hígado de generar glucosa a partir de precursores que no son glucosa. Esto se hace a través del lactate, en inglés a través de aminoácidos gluconeogénicos y a través de la grasa. No pasa nada con esto. De hecho, no hay que estar siempre, siempre en ketosis. Entonces, si comes carne una vez al día, te va a sacar de la ketosis, pero vas a volver bastante pronto, ¿de acuerdo? Para aquellos que, que no lo sepáis y como curiosidad, cuando nacemos estamos en ketosis. ¿De acuerdo? Y la leche de nuestra madre es cetogénica, a pesar de, de que tiene carbohidratos y los bebés <coughs> están, están en ketosis y cuando toman la leche siguen en ketosis, les baja un poquito porque tiene carbohidratos, pero entran en ketosis muy rápido, ¿de acuerdo? Es nuestro estado metabólico natural. Pero cuando comes así, 
um, I mean, everybody's different, clearly. I know people that function very well on a vegetarian diet. Yeah. Not for me, dude. A largo plazo, no. Todo el mundo se beneficia de una dieta keto porque básicamente somos miembros de la misma especie. Si os fijáis, no hay, ningún, no hay ninguna especie animal en donde eh, unos tengan una dieta y otros tengan otra para funcionar de forma óptima. Todos los lobos comen carne, todos los leones comen cebra. No hay un león que sea vegetariano y le vaya mejor. Entonces, la gente que mejora en dieta vegetariana es porque partía de una dieta que era peor que la vegetariana. Y por eso hay mucha gente que se cambia de dietas basadas en, en plantas, la vegetariana o la vegana, a una dieta carnívora. Porque no es tan bien. Al revés, no tanto. Para mí, sí, gluconeogenesis, take you out of ketosis. A widespread fear surrounding keto is that consuming too much protein may lead to the upregulation of a process called gluconeogenesis and throw you out... Es normal entrar en, en gluconeogenesis. Tiene que haber algo de eso. Es malo si es demasiado. Si yo como mucha proteína y demasiada poca grasa, entonces es demasiado. Entonces tiene que ser en la cantidad correcta. Of ketosis, undoing all your hard work. The truth is, gluconeogenesis is essential for our overall health and actually allows us to remain in ketosis. Oh, mm. okay. So it's good. So whatever that is, that's how I function at my best. So that's how I eat now. Like last night when Dave brought the pizza backstage, it looked good. What'd you do? I wanted a piece. I was like, I'm not eating it. Did you leave the room or anything? Or what no. were some of your methods you used to stay away from it? Cuesta, cuesta de entender que haya gente que vea una pizza y, y tenga la, digamos, la fortaleza mental de saber decir que no. ¿De acuerdo? Entonces, cuando uno está muy adicto, esto cuesta mucho. Es como si te ponen un, un cigarrillo cerca y estás intentando dejar de fumar. Pero en algún momento, a la mayoría de la gente lo que les ocurre es que, básicamente, desarrollan la fortaleza mental para decir que no. Entonces, no les apetece. Y aunque les apetezca, saben decir que no. ¿Qué es lo que le pasa a Joe aquí? I don't really, I don't have to do that. I just go, no. Just not eating it. Did you do a gum or anything to keep yourself busy? No, 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 no. I wasn't even itchy. I wasn't wow. itchy. You know, if I had a couple of cocktails, I mean, I probably would have grabbed a slice. Oh, fuck you, yeah, boy. That's the problem. <laughs> couple of cock, couple of tequilas. Oh, yeah. Next thing you know, I want some pizza. Oh, dude, I'll fucking... Qué bueno es el podcast de Joe. Dejadmelo en la caja de comentarios si sois fan. Cinco libras son... Pam, pam, pam. Unos dos kilos. Dos kilos, dos kilos y medio en dos semanas. Es sorprendente la cantidad de ejemplos de gente que veo que más o menos pierden un kilo por semana. No, no significa que cada semana vayas a perder un kilo. Pero si lo haces durante suficientes semanas y aún estás por encima de tu peso, pierdes a razón de un kilo por semana. Para aquellos que queráis tener una idea de, bueno, y si la hago, ¿cuánto voy a perder? Más o menos eso. Shriveled up. Do you have some fitness goals? Like at this point in your life, you've kind of been through fitness a lot. It's been a big part of your life. Do some of your fitness goals kind of change as you as we get a little bit older? Do you think? Not for me. No, yeah. no, because with uh, hormone replacement and all the stuff that I do, even at 55, my body functions essentially the same way it did when I was 30. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I have no problem <clears throat> doing hard workouts, and kettlebells, heavy bag workout, jujitsu. Injuries are an issue, you know, with me. Like, I just tweak my... Es una bestia, Joe. ...back muscle the other day doing some deadlifts. But nothing serious. But, um... But as far as, like, goal, fitness goals, it's just to maintain this. Yeah. Like, I, I know I have a, an extraordinary level of fitness for my age, and I just maintain that. And I think that if you can maintain it, that's the key. The real problem with people is they get out of shape, and then getting back in shape is very hard. It's a fucking grind. Yeah. It's a grind. And for me, for my mental health... Una de las ventajas de la dieta carnívora es que te pone en un sitio en donde la gente parece ser, según lo, lo que dicen, se animan con el tema del ejercicio. Se ponen en un estado de forma que ni sospechaban que podían tener. Man, I am not the same person if I don't exercise. You know, with that whole thing with like... 100%. The frequencies. I've sold $10 million of water. 
Lo vamos a dejar aquí, chicos. Ya lo habéis escuchado. Dieta carnívora. Joe vuelve a ello. Eh, bueno, bueno, una vez pruebas lo bueno, eh, digamos que quieres volver. Entonces eh, lo hizo una vez. Y ahora ha vuelto. Dejadmelo en la caja de comentarios, chicos. ¿Qué opináis al respecto? Si os sorprende, si no, si lo habéis probado, cómo vais, etcétera, etcétera. Dadle like si os ha gustado el vídeo. Compartidlo y nos vemos en el siguiente, chicos.